Here's a present for you. <laughs> Hello and welcome. This is Rufamonger. And my friends, it is Techmas. So Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. And in the spirit of this holiday season, we have Techmas. And what Techmas is is basically a grab bag of assorted tech for characters. So in this video here, I got five examples here of just some random tech, and hopefully maybe you'll learn something you didn't know before about Mortal Kombat 11. We also have a companion video for Dragon Ball Fighters, so you can check that out as well. And with that all said, let's get started. And now for our first little stocking of tech, we're gonna talk about Aaron Black and just how low can he go? And turns out, very. So his down three and his sweep back four, they're a lot lower to the ground than you might think to the point where it can go under moves that you should not be able to go under. So we got Jade here as an example. And what Jade is gonna do, she's gonna do her wake up up three. And what this is, is a mid. So a mid means no neutral ducking, you get smacked, right? So you have to block it if you're gonna crouch. Or do you? Well, turns out, thanks to his down three and his back four, the sweep, he doesn't even have to play around with that game. He can go so low to the ground, that mid is gonna go over his head. So here we are once again with that mid. And you know what? Nah, not dealing with it. You know what? Just not having it, not feeling it, right? Uh, so with Aaron Black, if you're up against Jade specifically, you can just basically down three, or just do another sweep on her wake up and just completely disrespect her. And the thing here is this, if she whiffs, yeah, it goes over your head. You recover just a little bit before her. So she kind of lost her turn. If she tries to do wake up up two, well, this just beats a clean. If she tries to roll out, you'll recover hopefully in time enough to either punish the roll or at the very least be advantage against the roll. And that's kind of a big deal. Now, Jade, she's an odd cat, right? There's a couple characters that can actually do this to Jade, not specifically just Aaron Black. So let's get a little bit more crazy. Now, poor old Shao Kahn, he don't got much. Maybe Christmas will be nice to him and get him some buffs for Christmas. But what he got here, he does have his hammer toss, which is a mid projectile. So once again, being a mid projectile, you gotta block it. There's no neutral ducking it. Aaron Black is no exception. If he tries to neutral duck it, he's gonna get conked on the head. So no dice there. However, yeah, he can totally just sweep under it. So that's no good, right? He's so low to the ground, he's actually lower than just crouching. So on reaction, and you gotta practice the timing a bit. If you see it, you can just sweep instead of having to block it. And it'll just go clear over your head. Now you might say, well, you know, Shao Kahn hammer, even though it's a mid, the animation's a little high. And you know what? True enough. So let's go even lower to the ground. Now you're probably already thinking, wait a second, Robocop, are you telling me he can go underneath this gunshot? It's one that is like so low to the ground and yeah, he totally can. Now the timing, it's a little tricky, but as you can see, very doable. So what's the lesson here? Well, the lesson here is explore, learn, lab, try stuff out. A lot of hitbox, hurtbox issues have been fixed in Mortal Kombat 11 Ultimate, but obviously, as you can see, not all of them, so take a look at any given mid you think just gives you a little too much trouble. And if you're playing Aaron Black, maybe a down three or back four is what the doctor ordered. You know, don't submit to it. Just get out of its way. And now for our next little tidbit here, we're going to show you about Garrus Pressure. How he can effectively re-stand the foe, be very advantage in their face, and force them into a guess a strike or guess a grab mix-up. Now for our first example here, we're going to need the Sand Clone. You know what? Sand Clone, kind of a good move. You're probably gonna pick it anyways, so not too rare. And we'll take any given hit confirm for this example here. We'll do four, two, one, into our temporal advantage, enhance, and then we'll combo out from there. So that setup right there, we did stand four and canceling into our clone. And we have a clone out, then we uppercut him, it launches him. So let's continue the combo. And we use that already existing sand clone and we teleport into it. And we teleport into it, we're right in front of the enemy, as you can see, and we're plus seven advantage. And at this point, 
Well, if the enemy tries to hit something, you are going to win. Your moves, because you're already plus seven frames ahead of them, they're gonna come out first. Once they learn what that's all about, well, hey, I'm gonna block, and then, hey, I'm gonna throw you, right? And that's kind of where we're at. So in essence, once we're getting our setup in here, yeah, we are indeed giving up just a little bit of damage, right? To be sure, but then we're getting the pressure in. So we got about 22% there, and our potential reward will be a lot bigger. Because at that point, if they take the hit and get a combo, then you can go for your big boy combo. And then those two combined were like, oh, well, over 50%. Or maybe they took the grab. And if they took the grab, maybe we're just that close to the corner. Maybe we get a grab or maybe we get the crushing blow. And that's another 30% right there. But either way, if they take the combo and then they guess wrong, at minimum, you're still doing well over 30% at that point. And the big deal here is just you're resetting the damage scaling and really messing with the enemy. Also, one of the beautiful things here, of course, you can go for the strike, get your hits. But if you're going for the tick throw setup, specifically 4-2 into the grab, which is a tick throw setup on block, you are so advantaged if they try to jump out, you'll still hit him with the 4-2, and then that grab will actually combo, and then you still get him. So here I am now as Devor, right? And I'm just going to jump out. I don't want to deal with this madness, right? And if I jump out, well, there you go, right? Instead of taking the tick grab, that just turned out to be a natural combo anyways. So very powerful setup. And this idea, honestly, is not even unique to the Sand Clone. There's other ways you can get this kind of setup. So let me show you another. So this one won't even launch the foe, so they don't even get a chance to break away. And it keeps them same side as well. So it effectively doesn't really matter what you do, but as long as you end your temporal advantage in down four. As down four causes a lot of hits done here, as you can see, plus 17, right? So you just immediately dash after and effectively the same kind of setup. And you dash in and go for a grab or go for a strike or go for whatever you want, right? That is effectively the same idea. So you just get a lot of pressure on the foe. They're restanded, they can't do anything. So no wake up, up two, up three rolls, none of that stuff. They effectively just have to guess. So one of the bigger changes in Mortal Kombat 11 Ultimate was just the universal changes to a lot of the pokes, right? And especially for a lot of characters, they're down fours. You know, little kick the shins for a lot of characters. They got more advantage on hit. Now it doesn't read like much on paper, but it's actually a pretty big deal for a lot of characters. And that's why we got Shao Kahn as an example here. For Shao Kahn, if he hits you with a D4, well, all well and good, he was gonna do it. This is one of the buttons he uses the most because he doesn't have many good buttons, but he couldn't get much for just outside of the corner. In the corner, sure, right? But now, thanks to Mortal Kombat 11 Ultimate, he can force a jail even from that far away. Since his stand one has deceptively long range, since you're forced into a stand animation from the D4, if he dashes forward basically all but the most maximum ranges, he can now jail you. So it's just a neat little way. And if you catch people just smashing, like trying to get out some way, jump, hit buttons or whatever, then all of a sudden a little love tap. Effectively becomes a full on combo. And Shao Kahn's not the only person to benefit from this. So just to show you another example. So Jade's another character that benefits from this kind of cocktail. A very strong down four. One of the better ones in the game to be sure, right? Has the advantage of more plus frames. A good longer range, you know, just somewhat quick move and back two, and you put the two together, all of a sudden hitting a down four and dashing into back two is now totally a very realistic threat. And of course, back two now just getting a lot with new strings and all that kind of stuff too as well. Well, you can go from there. But yeah, so a lot of characters now, and just try character to character to see who you like. Their basic, most basic building block, down four, right? Their basic poke. Now, thanks to the extra frames, dashing forward into a thing is a very real possibility for a lot of characters when it never was before. Next up is the Hydro Kazeme. I do believe this was uh, discovered by one Lord Akio, and Akio calls it Hydro Kazeme, so that's what we're gonna call it. And what is it? Well, it's using Rain's powers, and specifically the Hydro Boost here, to just really mess with the enemy in the corner. So all we need in the corner is knock down the enemy. It doesn't really matter how you do it. All you really need is specifically be advantage. So don't do a weird setup where you land and you're negative, right? As long as you're a little bit advantage, this will work out just fine for you. And what we're gonna do is this.
as you land and they're getting up, just do another Hydro Boost here and do it the enhanced version specifically. And then all of a sudden, we're kind of taking away all the options from the enemy. Your wake up up three options. Hey, they're invincible, but... You're not there to be hit. You're in the air so you can land on their head and then just combo out. And wake up up twos. They're designed to beat a lot of jumps, sure, but the problem is this. It's immune to air attacks, but the water starts on the ground. So uh, it has no protection against that. And these uh, water spouts are very active. They are on the screen for a long time. And as any frame of that connects with the enemy, which it will, then all of a sudden they get hit, they get launched up, you hit them, there you go. Someone prone to rolling a lot? Hey, oh, well, there you go, punish. So you'll auto correct in the air and then land and bop them on the head. So it's kind of got all the major options dead to rights, right? And uh, if you delay your wake up at all, it just makes this a lot more meaty. So that doesn't really work out too much either. So how do you get rid of this? How do you deal with this? Well, one, Rain has to burn a bar, right? And he's probably not gonna have the other bar ready to go immediately. So effectively, just wait him out block. Now I know, hey, you're just like me. I'll be the first one to admit I'm guilty as this as anyone else's. I wanna do the big play. I wanna wake up up three. I wanna roll out and get a combo, all that stuff, right? But for this specific situation, just kind of wait your turn, right? Rain will run dry, no pun intended, pretty quick if this is what he wants to keep doing. So it's a very strong setup, but it's not one he can just loop indefinitely. But still, it is a strong setup. So there you go, now you know. So for our final piece of this video, we're gonna be talking about Collector. So this setup I'm about to show you has had a lot of revisions over time, and it's actually slowly been getting better over time, thanks to just certain hitbox, hurtbox changes over the course of the game's life. And now thanks to the fact we have custom variations, we can finally have a grenade and our command grab, which is a mid command grab, by the way. So there's no neutral ducking this, just like say Kotal Khan, it's a mid. So we can now finally have these together and now this makes the setup the best it's ever been. So what is it? Now it has to do with our combos. Now Collector, he's never been a low damage character. Like this setup right here is a low damage combo for Collector and it's still 32%, right? And uh, that's just off stand four. If we were to get a little bit closer, we can get a little dirtier with it. All of a sudden now, what is this gonna be? Like 37% mid screen. That was easy combo, right? So his damage has never been the problem. And if we were just to take a little bit off the end, we can actually get a restand and basically force the enemy into a guest strike or grab setup. So we'll do a stand for a starter, and trust me, the collector, this is a very common occurrence. So we did 28.5%, which is still very good. And we knocked the enemy back a little bit, and this is actually better against different characters. It's actually, this is the worst possible setup, and this is against Devora. Against other characters, I'll show you, it'll be a little bit better. But what we are is plus 18, Frames of advantage, and is standing, so no rolls, no wake up up threes, up twos, all that kind of stuff. So what we're doing here is we're doing jump two, stand three, and throw a grenade. At which point here, after that knockback, we want to dash in. Neither do back two, uh, it's a mid, 10 frame startup, or dash four, uh, two, two. It's four, two, two, if they try to jump, it catches them all the time. They can't jump out of four, two, two, and uh, leaves them in a very easy, hit confirmable combo state. Or we dash in and command grab. Really that simple. So here I am as Devorah, and I'm the one getting comboed, and I'm worried about that command grab, so I'm just gonna jump right out. Oh, didn't work, right? The strike hits. And of course, as soon as you start respecting the 4-2-2 option, well, then you're gonna get grabbed, right? So that is effectively in a nutshell. It's either guess dash in and a button usually back two or 4-2-2, or guess dash in and a command grab. And it's being a command grab and not a regular grab, you know, no teching, no neutral ducking, none of that stuff. Which, of course, if you try to hit buttons or neutral duck 422, you get hit anyways, so whatever. But this concept existed before, but now I can have a command grab. It's just effectively more airtight and better. I would do the same thing before, but I had a techable option, right? And it was still good, but there you go. And now this is against Devora. Devora, 
has a weird hitbox when it comes to grenades. Against male characters, what we can do instead is this. After our Ebola, we'll do jump two as always, but instead of stand three, we'll do forward three. And what that gets us is this. Just slightly more corner carry. And corner carry is always a good thing. And it leaves us closer to the enemy. So if your timing's a little off, maybe you know, you'll struggle with this. But against the male character, since you do 4-3 in the grenade, well, the timing's literally just easier because they're closer. So you only have to do a tiniest of tiny dashes before you go into 4-2-2 or just go right into the command grab. So basically, at the end of your combo, you can get a mix-up. <laughs> <laughs> and you still get appreciable damage because damage is not hard for Collector to come by. Uh, I've always said Collector is one of the most slept on characters in this game. I've said that since the start and I'll keep saying it to this day because people don't put time into this character and he's a lot better than you think. Like, did you know instant air grenades are super plus on block? Well, they are and that's just like one tiny little aspect. But anyways, Collector good and this is also a very good setup. And there we go. So hopefully I taught you something you didn't already know. And you know what? If you're a smart cookie, you knew everything, post in the comments below, share a little bit of tech for everyone else so they can all just benefit and we can all learn together. And that all said, my friends, that is Techmas. So Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, all that. Be good to one another and uh, look forward to what the channel has in store for you in 2021. It should be a good year. And that all said, my friends, hey, thank you very much for watching. Hope this video has found you well and go out and play some Mortal Kombat.